So let's go ahead and create some security policies around the IMDB site to uh, um, secure the, the database a little more um, robustly. And uh, I have a SQL Server Management Studio window open to my copy of the database on my server. And so this is not cisdbss.pcc.edu. It's actually running on Mark PC, which is a machine on my local area net. And I have uh, admin privileges on this database as well. Um, you will not be able to execute these commands on um, cisdbss.pcc.edu with the 275 student account. Um, that account only has access to um, search um, to select on certain databases and to create tables on CIS Sandbox X. It doesn't have um, permission to do the things that I'm going to be doing in this video. So if you want to try these out and you're on Windows, you can run your own copy of the database and connect to that and try these out. Um, if you're not on a Windows machine and you don't have the ability to dual boot into Windows or to run a virtual machine that's running Windows, um, then you won't be able to test these out. You, you just need a database with permission to be able to do this. So I'm not going to expect you to actually run these commands because not all of you will be able to do it, but you should at least understand what types of commands I'm using and roughly the syntax so that you can look them up later when you do need them, and you will at some point. Um, so the first thing I want to do is uh, create some logins. So a login is basically an account that you can log into. And uh, I want to make a clear distinction between the accounts on the IMDB website. So I'm going to execute my select statement. Actually, I have a copy of it right here, so I'm just going to copy it. So here's the thing that shows all of the accounts on the IMDB website, the Graph TV website. So here they are. So here are a bunch of accounts on the IMDB website. And these live in the users table under the IMDB database. That is not the same as a user account or a login on um, Mark PC um, SQL Server that's running on my machine. So I connect to SQL Server running on my machine. The actual accounts that it knows about are under security logins. And basically, these are default accounts that come out of the box. Um, this is the only user account. This and this are the only user accounts on the machine right now. So important to understand that what we're talking about creating here is actually logins and user accounts on the SQL server that's running on Mark PC, not on the IMDB website. Those are two separate things. So let me go ahead and create a new query file. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this as documents week 10 security. And then the first thing I'm going to do is create a login. And uh, it doesn't really matter what database I'm using when I do that. But uh, the command to create a login is create login. And then I give it the login name. And then there are two kinds of logins I can create. So one login uses normal Windows authentication um, and uh, lets you connect directly to the database, assuming you're logged on to Windows, which is what I use to connect here. So this mark PC backslash mark, that's my Windows account that I'm connected to the database using. 
Um, the other kind of account, which is what we actually want here, is um, a SQL Server authentication. And uh, that will allow you an application to create a, a network connection to the database to authenticate itself and then to send a SQL command to it and receive the results back over the network. And so the way I specify a SQL Server authentication login is by supplying a password for the login. So with password equals and then a password. So that's the basic form of the command. And uh, there's some optional things that I can specify here, like a default database and default language and so on. Um, but uh, when you're using an application to connect to the database, not really necessary. So let me just comment that one out, use it as a template. So what do I need for logins and accounts? So I basically have three different security levels identified from what I was talking about before. Um, I have the search functionality where I'm retrieving a list of movies that match keyword search. And then on the login page, I have um, login functionality where I'm looking for an existing user in the users table, but I don't need to update or, add or, or insert. And then registering an account where I insert a new row into the users table. So those are the three basic types of functionality. And later on, when I get to that part, I'm going to create roles to manage those privileges. Oops, that was the wrong database. But for now, I'm just creating login. So I'm going to create three accounts, create login. And so this will be the uh, um, user reader. So I am DB user reader with password equal. And then unfortunately, I have to specify this in clear text. So I am DB user reader. Now this is not great, but since uh, my database server is behind a firewall and you can't connect to the database server directly, it's probably relatively safe. Um, and then create login IMDB user insert with password IMDB user insert. So this login is going to be associated with a user who only has permission to insert new rows into the users table. This, this one is only going to be able to select on the users table. This one's only going to be able to insert on the users table. And then create login IMDB search user with password IMDB search user. And then this user is not going to have access to the users table at all. Um, we'll only be able to execute search queries on the other IMDB tables. So let me go ahead and execute these three commands. And then I'm going to refresh logins. And you'll see I have IMDB search user, IMDB user insert, IMDB reader. If I right click on one of these and look at properties, I see that there's a password specified. Um, if I want to see the uh, server roles, I just get public. So by default, I have public access, which really doesn't give you anything by default. Um, and then to look at uh, user mapping, um, this tells me what rights I have on which databases. And right now, there's just the IMDB database and the system databases that come bundled. Um, and I don't have any special rights on any of them. So I could check off the database, and then I can add which roles I want to let the user have on this database. And I can set separate role memberships for different databases. And then in securables, you have a whole long list of uh, different permissions that you can grant. If you look under the Effective tab, this shows what rights um, IMDB search user currently has, which is just 
connect, connect to SQL and can view any database. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Um, I'm going to create a new query window and then I'm going to change my connection. And this time I'm going to use SQL Server Authentication to connect to Mark PC. And I'm going to use the IMDB Search User Login, IMDB Search User Password. And I'll go ahead and remember the password and connect. And then I'm also going to do that here. I'm going to disconnect and connect in the Object Explorer. And let's see what I get. So if I open Databases, I just have IMDB. Here's the system databases that come prepackaged, basically. Um, under Security, if I look in Logins, I only see the login for IMDB Search User. I don't see any of the other bundled ones. Um, and see all the server roles. If I right click on that and look at properties, um, go to server roles, I'm public, um, user mapping, one or more databases are inaccessible, will not be displayed in the list. I only have permission to look at master msdb, tempdb here, and securables. Let's try use imdb selects top 50, whoops, top 50 star from name basics. And this will not work. Server principal IMDB search user is not able to access database IMDB under the current security context. So I have the rights to view that this database exists, but I can't actually read data from it because that's a different right.